All right, so I'm gonna open up and disassemble this Lenovo Legion Y540-15IRH, and then it says model name 81SX. All right, so the customer actually already took all the screws out from the bottom. You'll want to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Make sure you don't mix up the screws because they are different size, shapes, and lengths. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, once you remove all those screws, we're going to remove the bottom cover. Let's see here. So to do that, I'm going to open the cover like this, and then I'll get my fingernails between this gap here and I'll push on the thing with my thumb while I pull back with my fingernails just like this okay so you don't want to push on the trackpad itself so I'm only pushing on the sides around it okay all right once you got that up I think we should be able to rotate this around and then just follow this all right so here you can see this part actually it's a little different so there's this little edge here that sticks up so you just go underneath there and pull that up okay so the customer actually spilled liquid in here so we're going to see if it's going to be repairable or not same thing with this side all right once you get all the sides and then the front up it looks like the back comes out pretty easily just kind of lift it up and move it over like that all right so they said they spilled liquid in the keyboard a while ago I'm gonna clean this off with a toothbrush just do that all right do this over a trash can just so I don't get all the dust everywhere in my work area okay so it looks like not all the dust comes out but it is better okay all right so I just cleaned out some of the dust in there so it's cleaner now all right, we'll set that aside. Okay, and first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery. So let's remove all the screws, again, using a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver. And of course, again, you want to make sure the screws stay in order. So let's remove these. Okay, and the way I keep them in order, I put them in the pattern that I remove them. So if you see the shape and then you have one like going up there, I just put them like that in that pattern on my desk or work area. Okay. Just like that then we'll lift the battery up let's see here just like this all right and then to disconnect the battery there isn't really much of a lip here let me zoom in usually what I'll do is I'll get the lip of the battery connector and then I'll use that to kind of pull it but this one doesn't really have one so what we're doing is while we're holding the battery up you want to try and get this cable um, while I'm kind of lifting the battery up, what I do is I push down on here and then I kind of wiggle it as I pull it. Let's see if this will work. If you can, you want to get your other finger underneath as well so you can kind of pinch it together and kind of just wiggle it like that. And there we go. It comes out just like that. All right, so the battery model number here, if there is one, let's see. L17M3PG2. So hopefully you can read that. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit more. There you go, oops. Okay, so that's the model number. So we'll set the battery aside. And usually after removing the battery, I like to open the screen and then press and hold the power button. All right, so we'll do that just to drain any power. I mean, it is liquid damage, so it's probably not gonna do anything, but we'll do it anyways just to be safe. All right. Okay, there we go. So. Now, most people are probably just going to be interested in the uh, M.2 SSD here. This is a M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. Um, this stuff is kind of all just tearing off. I'm going to try and scrape it up and then move it over so it's aligned properly. It shouldn't be moving over like this. 
So usually if you replace the SSD, you're going to want to transfer this piece over. This is a thermal pad, which is supposed to help transfer the heat away from the SSD and into the outer casing. So there we go. Okay, there's also a two and a half inch SATA hard drive um, slot here, but it doesn't look like they included the connector. So it looks like the connector would plug in here. Um, these kinds of connectors, there's a little latch, you can lift it up and then you can put the connector in and then you just put the latch back down. Just like this one, I'll show a close up of what that looks like. But um, you basically flip up these latches like this and then you can put it back down. I am gonna have to take everything out so um, I guess I might as well just show everything. All right, let's see. So it's liquid damage, so let's go ahead and start taking out components. So this is the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. You can upgrade this to a larger one if you want. Just remove the screw. You can lift the SSD up slightly, and then you can pull it out just like that. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, it doesn't look like I need to remove this bracket for anything. The hard drive, or this is the keyboard connector here. So I'm going to zoom in, make it a little bit easier to see stuff. Um, let me actually go to the RAM next since people are going to want to upgrade their computers. So to remove the RAM, there's this metal box on top. So I just get my fingernail underneath. You can use a plastic pry tool, but you get under there and then you pry up this plastic box. Let me see, it's kind of stuck on this one. I'm going to try from this side. There we go. And then go on this side should okay there we go so it should just pop up like that take this cover off set it aside and here's what the ram looks like so this is um, 8 gigs pc4 2666 v so you can put two 16 gig sticks if you want um, but you want to make sure it's pc4 2666 v all right so there we go put the stick of ram back in let me check the other stick of RAM, see if there's any signs of liquid damage or anything. It looks good. All right, we're going to put this metal box back on top. Make sure you get it all lined up with those little, uh, I don't know what you would uh, call those, clips or brackets or whatever. Whatever it's the things that hold it in place. Okay, clamps, I don't know. All right, make sure to get them lined up and then just push that back down. All right, so we're gonna disconnect everything now. Let's see here. So we got the speaker here. Oops, let me zoom out. Okay, let's zoom out a little more. All right, so we got the speaker here. So these are held in with these little blue rubber circle rings. Um, and then you kind of just wiggle and pull them up. But I'm going to leave these in place because I don't need to remove them. And I'd have to undo all this adhesive. This thing here with the copper is actually a wireless antenna. So this is one of the wireless antennas. And it looks like there's another wireless antenna. I think this copper piece is one. All right, so we're going to disconnect all this stuff. Um, I can't really see what's underneath here. But this looks like the trackpad buttons here. All right, down here, the trackpad cable goes here to the buttons, and then the from the buttons it goes to the motherboard here. So this is the touchpad cable. We're going to remove that. All right, try and get underneath and lift it up. It looks like there is an adhesive holding this down, so just know that you can't just rip it up. You've got the CMOS or the BIOS battery here. Actually, let me zoom in to show all these little components. So to remove that, I just grab the little wings of the connector here. With my fingernail, you can use um, tweezers or something, but I just wiggle it and just keep wiggling left and right, left and right, and eventually it pops out just like that. All right, we've got the keyboard connector here. Flip up the latch, and then we're going to pull that out. You want to be careful because there's this adhesive stuck to it. So let's peel that adhesive off. Or you can try and use that to help you pull the connector out if it does. All right, so that actually worked. Okay, but yeah. I guess I'll peel it off later. Okay, so we got that. Then we got this connector here. It, I think it is held down with adhesive, so well, we're gonna disconnect this. I don't really need to remove this board, but I'll probably, well, we'll probably take it out just to see if any liquid somehow got underneath. So let's take these two screws out. I'm just gonna put it back right after. <clears throat> All right, so we got those two screws. We'll lift this up, and it looks okay. There is some dust on it, so I am just going to clean it off with the toothbrush. 
but other than that, we're going to leave it. Okay, so we're going to put this piece back. Um, you probably will want to peel this up, but let's remove this fan first. So the fan here has the connector just like the CMOS battery. Same thing, you just kind of keep wiggling it, and it should eventually pop out. So just like this, All right? You kind of want to be patient. There we go. All right, so there's one screw. I don't think that's holding the whole fan with just this one screw, so the fan's probably not going to come out with just removing this. Let's see. Yeah, it, it's actually caught underneath the motherboard, it feels like, so... We're going to have to actually remove the whole thing. Let's see here. What screws do we got? So let's go ahead and start removing all the screws. I'll leave this board out for now. Let me zoom out. Okay. Sorry. I know it's going to be hard to see because the screws are so small and the lighting isn't too great. But hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So we got two screws here. this looks like it's holding that metal bracket in place so we'll lift this metal bracket off and that looks like a lock mechanism all right so that acts as a lock in here okay there's the charge port right there let's see I don't know why there's this here is there a screw under this there might be a screw underneath this sticker I don't know Oops, I poked a hole in it. So if it wasn't warranty, it's not anymore. But uh, there's that one screw. Let's remove that. All right. Okay, let's see here. What else do we got? So we got those three screws up. I'm not going to remove the heat sink screws, so we're going to leave that be. All right, let's remove the two screws holding this fan in place. And again, I am putting the screws in the pattern that I'm removing them to make it easier to know where the things go. Okay, so this fan is also trapped underneath. We're going to disconnect this as well. Okay, just like this. Keep wiggling it. And it'll eventually pop out. Don't try and rush it and yank it out really fast because you can damage it. The gray cable's on the bottom, black cable's on the top going to remove this one screw or oh, we can remove the wireless antennas first so just go underneath let me zoom in again I need to be careful now because all these components are out on the table and I don't want to accidentally knock them around okay let's see if I can show this so the wireless antennas okay so if I have enough room on my desk all right so here I just get underneath the tails of the antennas and then just pull it straight up just like that all right, move the antenna out of the way. Same thing with this one. Tail, pull it straight up. There we go. All right, we're going to remove the screw now. Okay, and the wireless antenna or the wireless card will pop up like this and then just grab it and pull it out just like the stick of RAM. Okay, set that aside. Here you can see there's actually a screw that was hiding underneath there. So you want to make sure to, oops, so there's actually a screw hiding underneath the wireless card here, so we're going to remove that one. Okay, let's see. Are we missing any other screws here? Okay, there's one screw down in this corner here. Okay, are we missing anything else? All right, so this piece, we're going to want to peel it up. You want to be very careful. Peel it up slowly. I find that it helps to kind of pull it to keep it flat as you peel it up. But this one's very difficult to peel, so there we go. All right, there we go. Now let's see if it will lift up. Still feels like it's being held down by something. Hmm. Let's see here, so 
Let me zoom out a bit so you can see better. I think it might be the heat sinks that are just holding it down, so we kind of have to lift from the heat sink area. Um, I feel like there might be some screw on this side or something holding this down. This is weird. I don't know what's holding this side down. Um, <clears throat> I don't see a screw holding that down, so it's strange. Let me see if I can pull the fan out. No. It's really stuck pretty strongly in there. This lift up. Oh, it's on this side. Okay, this is what I was missing. The speaker connector, we have to disconnect this. Okay, so same thing, just use the wings and slowly wiggle it out. There we go. All right, I was wondering why it wasn't raising up. All right, so now we should be able to lift this, I hope. No, something else is still holding it down. It's like right under the fan area here. I don't know. I don't see a cable. Um, okay, let's see. Rotate this and see if something is holding it here. Okay, let me look underneath. I honestly don't see anything under there, so I don't know. I'm going to try and just lift it up. Let's see. Let's start from this side, maybe. Okay, this fan is looks like it's coming out slightly. Huh. Oh, they hide a screw under there? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Okay, so the way they designed this, the heat sink is hiding two screws here or hiding screws that hold the fan down to the main board so i'm going to see if i can somehow remove this but it looks like i'm going to have to take the whole heat sink out which that's going to really suck i was hoping i wouldn't have to okay it looks like i have to so let's remove the heat sink here man that's a really bad design I guess it's a smart design as far as making people destroy their computers because most people aren't going to want to do this to get to the other side of the motherboard. So, well, it is what it is. Alright, let's take all these screws out. These screws actually stay attached to the heatsink. Alright, so once we got those out, we can lift the heat sink up. You can see it's really dusty and dirty inside. And here you can see all the thermal paste. You want to be careful not to dirty all these green pads because you will reuse those. This um, gray paste we are going to have to clean off and then use some new paste. Alright, I'm going to clean this heat sink off into the trash can. And then I have this air blower that I use. I'm going to use that to help clean it up. Okay, I'll clean the other. So this one's all nice and clean now. You can see through. All right, I'm going to clean the other one as well. There we go, we got all this cleaned up. I'm gonna set it aside for now, but I'm gonna have to redo the thermal paste later. Okay, so here you can see there's actually one screw here. Stupid design. Okay, now we can take this fan out. Um, if anyone needs the fan model numbers, give me a second. I'm gonna clean this off as well, because there's still some dust in here. Terrible design. 
they could have easily just not put that. I mean, they, they, I'm sure they purposely did it to make it hard to work on. All right, so let's see. There's the model number here. DFS. Oops, sorry. I don't think you can even read that in there. So I'll have to read it off. But DFS 200105B as in Bob, D as in David, 0, T as in Tom. So that's that fan model number. And this looks gross too, so I'm probably going to have to clean that off as well. Okay, so I cleaned off this stuff. Now we're going to remove this fan. So same thing, there's a screw in this corner here. Uh, purposely designed to make it difficult. All right, let's clean this fan off as well. I'm going to use the air blower. Sorry for all the dead time in my video. So I'm just using this thing to kind of clean the fan off. And these fans are different. So this one, the model number is DFS5M325063. B11. All right. So that's that model number. I'm gonna set that aside and then I'm gonna clean this off as well. All right. And of course, they hide more cables under here. So there's this cable here. This looks like probably the LCD or LVDS connector pop up that little latch all right I don't know how we're gonna pull that out because it's at a weird it's tucked underneath so okay it looks like we gotta lift this side of the board first make sure to peel this up okay slowly lift this up all right get this out from all those little connectors and then now we can move it over to the left and here you can see this connector is kind of tucked over there, kind of weird, and there's something connected underneath as well. Surprise, surprise, they want you to destroy more. This is the keyboard backlight cable, so we're going to flip this latch up, and there you go. The keyboard backlight cable just disconnected. So let's look underneath here. I honestly don't see any signs of corrosion on this so I don't know um, maybe a tiny bit here but that's not on an actual chip so I don't know they said they spilled liquid on it it happened about three days ago um, okay I'm guessing this is is that the power button so this the power button is part of the board it's right here so I wouldn't even be able to change that if I wanted to. That sucks. Okay, if they're lucky, com sometimes completely disassembling, disconnecting the CMOS battery and stuff like that will get it to work again. I'm gonna just try and scrub the, br um, the board. And if we're lucky, if there was like a small short on the board, then scrubbing this off might get it to turn on again. So let's just scrub this all up. Okay. Sometimes there's like a small short somewhere that you just don't see. But I really don't see any signs of liquid damage at all on here. At least not inside. Okay, we're going to go over to the other side. Do the same thing. Just brush this off just in case. But the liquid spilled on the keyboard side, so I'm pretty sure there's not really anything here. I'm going to test this and see if it turns on before I go ahead and put back all the 
before I go ahead and put back the or redo the thermal paste. Um, this board looks like it's going to be somewhat of a pain to reassemble, um, but we'll see. All right, so get this, put that latch up. We're going to reconnect the keyboard backlight connector. Okay, just reconnect it in there. Once you have it lined up, push the latch back down. I'm going to slowly flip it back over. All right, we're going to have to make sure all these cables end up back on top. And just like before, let's put this LCD LVDS connector back in. This is a very dumb design. I don't, I don't know whose idea this was. Okay, make sure all these cables end up back on top. I'm probably gonna have to use some tweezers later. Okay, get this cable up and out of the way. Get that lined up. All right, I'm going to use this little plastic tool to push the um, CMOS battery connector out of the way. All right, I somehow got thermal paste on my hand. I don't know when that happened. I'm just going to clean that off. Okay. All right, make sure all these connectors are on top. All right, and then we're going to start plugging stuff back in. Plug the speaker connector back in, and then I what I do is I pinch the two pieces together to make sure that the connector's not just shoving it off the board. Okay. All right, so we got that. Let's see if I can plug this back in. Move that over. All right, get that lined up. Get it to go in. Come on. There we go. Now that that's in, push this back down. Oops, I'm going to get thermal paste on my hands again. All right, so now we can actually, let's put the fans in first here. When I was cleaning the fans out, the dust somewhat smelled burnt, but I don't see any signs of like burnt, so I don't know. Maybe whatever they had in their house was just burnt. All right, so we're going to get this. We'll put this screw back in. All right, get the other fan. Put that there. Get this connector lined up. Same thing, squeeze the two together, just like that. Okay, I'll get that one screw. Make sure that the other screw hole lines up properly because once you tighten this down, if you put the heat sink on top, you're not going to be able to move it around again. Okay, go. All right, I'm going to put this USB board back in. Get the connector lined up, put the flap back down, line up the screw holes. So I'm going to have to peel this up to realign it better. There we go. Put back the two screws that were holding it down. Okay. Reattach the keyboard connector here little dusty in there. Clean that up. All right, get the cable in. Use the blue part to kind of help push it in and push that latch down. CMOS battery. All right, reconnect that. Same thing, pinch the two pieces together. All right, let me see if I can remember where all these screws came from. So, All right, let's put the M.2 SSD first. Just like this. Sorry, it's going out of view. Push that in. The screw. And put that back down. Okay, 
wireless car. Let's put that in. Oh wait, we do need to put back in these board screws. Um, let me see, was there one here? They hide one okay yeah they did hide one under here so let me make sure to put that back first put this screw back here underneath one was hidden under the SSD and then the other one here was hidden under the wireless card those are the only two screws that um, on the board are silver so keep that in mind all right SSD back in. At least if they need their data, I can get that out. It's on this SSD. It didn't look like there was liquid damage on it, so it should hopefully be okay. All right, I'm gonna put this screw for the fan here. All right, we'll put the other two screws for this fan here. Reconnect the trackpad cable. Come on, get in. There we go. Put that latch down. All right, wireless card, put it in at that angle. Make sure the wireless antennas aren't underneath when you put it down. Okay, get the screw, put that back in place. All right, and then we'll put this bracket up here. Oops, so this one goes here. All right. I forgot what, okay, nothing goes on that one. So we'll put the screw here. Piece of paper flew out. Okay. All right, once you get both screws on, you can tighten it in place. All right, now the wireless antennas, and then we're gonna temporarily put back the heat sink just to see if we can get it to power on. Because if it doesn't power on, I don't wanna redo the thermal paste and waste uh, thermal paste. So I wanna make sure that we can get it to power on before I start using thermal paste, all right? So get the antenna lined up. Once you got it lined up, if you move your fingernail over the top, it should stay in place. Then you can push it down. And this one, it's kind of, you have to make it go around the back of the screw. Otherwise, it will pop it out. All right, and then that one as well. There we go. Tuck the cable hiding under there. All right, so we got that. Let's zoom back out. Too far. All right, let's put back the heat sinks for now. Again, I'm not gonna redo the thermal paste unless it actually works. So we'll find out soon enough. If you want to know how to redo the thermal paste, you just wipe off the paste here with a paper towel and then get some rubbing alcohol, wipe it off again, make sure it's dry, do that on both sides. The thermal paste you apply, apply like a thin, like a, basically like a thing of rice a line so when you push it down the rice will smush and spread out like that you don't want to try and pre-spread it because then when you push it down it'll be like this you can see all these bubbles you don't want that so same thing with this but you'd use like a bigger piece this is almost a full size like a full size cpu but this is the graphics card die so this you'll have to use almost like the size of a pea and then just stretch it out into the shape of a uh, like rice or a bean or jelly bean or something all right 
So we'll put this piece back on top. Make sure to be careful when dropping this down. Okay. Try and get the screws lined up. They do number these, so normally when you do this with the thermal paste, you want to do it in order. So they have screw number one is right here. I twist it backwards to hear it click, and then I'll twist it twice. Then we'll go to the second one, same thing, one, two, all right? Click, one, two, and then we got screw number four is here. All right, number five is here. That's weird, normally they zigzag it. And then number six is here, and number seven is here, okay? So now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Screw number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and number seven. So I'm actually going to test it without putting the whole cover back on. So we're going to take the battery. Hopefully the battery is okay. And we're just going to put the connector in, line it up, and like before, pinch the two pieces together. Get the whole battery to line back up and drop back in place. Alright, so for now, I'm just going to put in like two of, the, or maybe three of the battery screws. So we'll put in the top one here. And then we'll put in the two bottom ones. So the one down here. And the other one here. Uh, and then let's see if it will turn on. I don't think it'll turn on until I plug it in. I don't have the original charger with me. The customer forgot to bring that. So let's see. Hopefully my lower power charger, if it does work, will work. Okay, right now nothing happens when I press it. Oh, okay. Wait. Come on. The light came on for like a second. So a lot of times on gaming laptops, you have to press and hold it when it's not plugged in. So let's see. Nope, nothing. I did see the light come on for a second. So, hmm. Oh, there we go. So the laptop is turning on. So I think we are good to go. So I am going to redo the thermal paste here. All right. Let's see. I don't know if the whole keyboard is going to work, but... Um, assuming it's working now, I am going to redo the thermal paste and we'll see. Luckily I didn't have to plug it in. The computer's still loading, kind of taking a while. So I'm kind of surprised it's taking so long. Okay, it finally loaded. It looks like it's working. So, okay, let me make sure if I can shut this down. I'm going to try and shut it down. Um... Let's see, can I turn the brightness on this up? Because it's so dark. Okay, I can. All right, so I'm going to make sure to shut this down. Let me also make sure keyboard backlight's working. Okay, so it looks like we might be good to go. I'm going to shut this down completely. All right, computer shutting down. And then I'm going to show you how to apply the thermal paste. Okay, so I think it's completely off. I'm gonna take the screws back out for the battery, okay. All right, let's take the battery screws back out and now I will show you how to do the thermal paste. So, there we go. All right, so let's take back out the heat sink so I'm just going to go in order of the one, two, three, four. It doesn't really matter when you remove it. As far as um, redoing the thermal paste, this design is kind of nice. But as far as removing the fans, it's kind of stupid. They shouldn't have put that thing like that. They, they could have put a thing that slides under, but they should have let you pull it out without having to undo a screw underneath. So they could have made it easily to where you didn't have to remove the heat sink just to take the fans out which is kind of bad because sometimes the fans go bad all right so let's remove the we're gonna undo the thermal paste here so like I said earlier 
Get a paper towel. It helps to kind of flip it upside down over a trash can, but uh, I'm gonna do it this way. You only need like a small piece while you're doing this. Okay, and clean it off. So if the paste isn't too bad, it'll clean off actually really easily. Um, over time, if it overheats, the paste will actually become really difficult to clean off. So keep that in mind. If the thing overheats, it can dry up the paste and turn it into like a rock. All right. So you don't need to make it completely clean um, because the main thing is the heat will come off from the center, the top part. Okay, I'm going to have to flip this upside down before I start dropping the paste on the stuff. So I like to hold it upside down over a trash can while I wipe it usually. Um, but then I can't show that in the recording. So hopefully you guys get the idea. So I'm cleaning off the CPU one as well. I'll show you with the heat sink what I'm talking about, or I'll try. Okay, so we got the thermal paste out here. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for now. Actually, where can I put this? Uh, okay, set that aside for now. All right, so I'll show with this. Oh, okay, this is garbage, so we'll put that there. All right, so what I do... I'll take basically the computer, hold it upside down like this, and then you just clean the thermal paste off that way, okay? So that way any chunks that fall off will fall into the trash and not end up on the board of the computer. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that on both of them. Hopefully you guys get the idea and we'll be able to do this. Okay, here we go. All right, so cleaned off most of it. Now what we're gonna have to do is use some rubbing alcohol. All right, so I take rubbing alcohol, 91%. Then I just get the paper towel, put some on there, okay? And then I'll use that to clean this off even better, okay? I mean, this paste is okay. It's it's pretty new. It's nice and um, pasty. It's not like a rock. So technically, you can leave this paste and then just add the paste on top. And then when you push it down, it will actually push the air bubbles out if you do it the method that I, I'll show in a bit. All right, so I clean that. Let's go ahead and get this. Then we'll clean this off as well. Here you can see there's like the paste residue. It kind of leaves residue everywhere. All right. Okay, so we'll just clean this a bit. It doesn't need to be 100% clean. Okay, there we go. Squeaky clean. All right. So now that we got that all cleaned up, what we're gonna do, we'll take the thermal paste. I like to use IC Diamond, you can use whatever you want. Um, just know that whatever, depending what you're using, if it conducts electricity, that you have to be careful not to get it on the board or any components other than these um, shiny silver areas. Okay, so here's what you do. Just get the thermal paste, make sure Clean that off. I don't want any dust on it. Okay. So what I do is I take the thermal paste and then I'll put this here. And you'll want to make like a thing of rice on here. So just like this. Okay, just like that. And that's actually quite a bit. This is more than you need. When it squishes down, it will actually spread it completely flat and super thin. So so I use the tip of the thing to kind of help move it around. And you do want to keep it like a mound, like a rice. Um, because when the thing goes down to press on it, 
it will smush the mountain down and it will push all the air bubbles out to the sides. So there's a lot of different methods, but I feel like this one makes more sense and works better. Okay, then we got this big one here. So this is going to need a lot of thermal paste. So same thing, probably about the amount of like a size of a pea. So if you were to mound this all together, should be similar to the size of a pea. Okay. Maybe a bit more there. Okay. That's even that's probably plenty. So so now what you do, just same thing, kind of spread it out. Doesn't need to be as long to the edges because when it pushes down, it will actually spread it out for you. Okay. So just like that. All right. And once you put the thing down, you don't want to lift it back up because if you lift it back up, it will create bubbles. And when you push it back down, it's not going to clear those bubbles. Um, once you create bubbles, you can actually put a little bit more and then smush it back down and it'll kind of push the bubbles out, but there will still be like trap bubbles. So it's better not to lift it back up. Once you lift it back up, you're going to have to redo the thermal paste again. So pretty much just like this. Okay. And now we're going to put the heat sink back on top. Oops, too far. Okay. Grab the heat sink. All right. Make sure you have it going the right way. Line that back up. Okay, and then carefully drop it back down. All right, so same thing like before. One, spin it twice. Two, spin it twice. Three, spin it twice. Four, spin it twice. Five, spin it twice. Six, spin it twice. Seven, spin it twice. If you want to be extra careful, you can go ahead and like go like two, 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 and then you can go ahead and just make sure they're completely tightened after that. Okay. And these things have built-in springs that help like slowly over time, like as the pace spreads, it will actually keep putting pressure to help keep it flat. All right. And I just realized I actually didn't even remove the battery. So, I mean, if you're careful, you'll be okay. But if you accidentally drop something metal in here, you can actually completely kill the computer. So hopefully if you did test it after removing this that you did remove the battery again and press and held the power button to drain the, the power to prevent um, any accidental damage to the computer. Okay, so we're just going to put back the battery screws. And then we're going to put the bottom cover on and hopefully everything should be good. So let's put back this. Okay, got all the screws back in. Okay, the customer gave me the screws in a bag, so I'll see if I can figure out where the screws go. But um, yeah, so like before, you want to actually lift the front up, get the back part lined up here. Okay, make sure that it's all lined up. You can push the clips back in on the top here. All right, and then go down the sides. Oops, sorry, couldn't see. And then squeeze it all together. All right, let's flip it over and test it, and then I'll see if I can figure out where the screws go. Usually I don't like customers um, taking the screws out because then I don't know where they came from, if they're different size, shapes, and lengths, which they are. So I'm gonna have to be careful putting these screws back because you can accidentally damage the computer if you put them back in the wrong spots. So, 
let's see, there's four really long screws. So I'm guessing those go towards the back near the hinge. Actually, there's five really long screws. And then there are six short ones. Okay, I should be able to figure this out. So the computer looks like it's working. I don't know the password, so I'm going to try and boot from something else to see if I can figure it out. Actually, let me try doing the recovery mode. So I'm holding the left shift key and I'm clicking restart. This will give a please wait option on the screen. And hopefully I can go to troubleshoot and then hopefully it will let me go to the command prompt. It'll probably ask me the password. If it does, then I can't do this. And I'll try and boot from my USB to test it if that's the case. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, it's saying please wait, please wait. Let's see. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's going to ask me to like log in. So I can't do it this way. I'm going to shut it down. Okay. Restart computer. Lenovo has a special key on the side. So let me show you here. So I'm using a little USB here, which has a software called, um, what's it called? Parted Magic. Um, it's a paid software, but anyway, so there's this little circle hole here and you can see there's a little like jump icon thing or that loop, which is Lenovo's one key recovery. So you can use a needle and push that. You can see it turned the computer on. And once you press that, it'll give you these options. So you can go to the startup BIOS boot menu. I'm going to go to the boot menu and I'm going to boot from my SanDisk USB. All right. And then this should let me do, here we go. So now if I want, I can test like the RAM here with memtest and then I can actually boot from this. It's basically Linux, but it has like special um, utilities to work on the computers. So I'm going to use this and then just open up like a notepad type thing and then I'm going to um, use that to test the keyboard. Anyways, what we're going to do now while it's loading that, I'm going to be putting back these screws. So let's see if I can do it this way. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five long screws. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the long one goes in the center here. All right, and then the other four, I'm sure, go towards the back. I hope that's right. And then, oh yeah, it looks like it should be right. Sorry, you can't actually see because it's off to the edges, but I'm basically putting all the screws in here. Okay. Then we got the shorter screws. So I'm sure now the short screws go on the sides here and then along the front. Okay. So the four screw the two screws off to these these sides here. And then there's four screws that are short at the bottom as well or towards the front where the laptop opens. Alright. Still loading the software, so I still have time. Last screw, might finish just in time. There we go. All right, so we got all the screws back in. Let's flip this over and it's still loading the software. Here you can see all the little yellow dots it's loading copying files to the RAM. All right, so let me see, maybe I should plug in my Lenovo charger. 
I don't know if it's actually plugged. Okay, it is plugged in up there. So for now, I'm going to plug in my Lenovo charger. It's not as powerful, but it should keep battery power to the computer. Okay, the charge light is on, so that's a good sign. All right. Wow, it's still copying files to the RAM. Okay, I don't know if I can show this. There we go. I don't want the laptop to like fall off the desk. That's a lot of little dots. I hope that's not the computer pressing stuff on the keyboard. Come on. Can't fail. I mean, you get the point. Um, so hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. It is loading now, so you're welcome to stay. I'm going to show you how I kind of check all the keyboard keys. The function keys, I don't know what to do to test them other than in Windows. You can kind of, or you can try and use them to adjust volume and things like that. But yeah, all right, so we're getting this to start up. So what I'm going to do, let's open, there's an applications thing up here. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's see, office, and then we're just going to open LibreOffice Writer. I think that's like Word. So I'm going to use this to try and type out. So to test the alphabet or the the letter keys, I'll type out the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So, oops. Okay, so all of the alphabet works. And then I'll check like the left shift, the right shift, caps lock works, tab works, enter works, shift key, oh, I already did that. Control works by doing control A, control X, and then alt tab, alt tab works. Um, see, the Windows key is not going to do anything in Linux. Function, okay, volume keys work, mute key works, brightness works. Microphone's not going to let me check. So a bunch of these other things won't really let me check. Okay, trackpad disable works. This key works. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Press press these two keys. Backspace works. Press these three. Press these two. Press these three. And then test the number pad. Um, num locks off. So turn that on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Plus this, that, that. Looks like everything is working. Up, down, left, right, all of these are working. So it looks like we are good to go. So yeah, hopefully this video helped. Again, if it did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Help others find this video. Thank you for watching. If you'd like, you can support me on Patreon. Um, you don't have to do like a monthly thing. I don't know how you would send like one time. You can do Venmo, Zelle, whatever. But uh, help me to continue doing this kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.